Welcome to uh, Talking South, episode 6, where we will go through this uh, new plot for the uh, Good Hope model and the half year Arctic Blue Ocean event estimates. But first, we will go through some of the other charts since the last time. And we will also end up talking a bit about good hope in general, or hope as it's more generally known. The good hope being the non-false hope or non-bad hope. Okay. So uh, this autumn we have had a... Um, pretty ordinary refreeze for sea ice extent. We're now at 44% refreeze of the winter maximum for 2018 and uh, the lowest um, year for extent is 2016 and the refreeze per the same day November 6 is 37% for 2016. And for volume, um, 2018 is at 18% refreeze, and the lowest year for CIS volume, 2017, is at 22%. So we are actually lower than the uh, leading low year for volume. And this is the uh, year to date, the average of all the CIS extent measurements for 2018. And you can see that we are second lowest, with 2016 as the lowest, and with a little under two months to go to the finish line. And it's pretty fair to say that. 2018 will likely be the second lowest on record for extent. Same graph for volume, and we are fourth lowest. Uh, it will likely be beaten by 2016, it looks like that. But anywhere from fifth lowest to fourth or maybe third lowest would be my best guess for volume. Then is the annual volume, uh, annual <laughs> average extent, and that is um, different from the the previous charts because the annual average is always 365 day averages, and not not just the days so far this year. So uh, we've been witnessing quite a big turnaround from uh, from 2018 being lower than 2016 to it going higher than 2016 and then making it almost full not a u-turn but a full turn to go along the 2017 graph um, so the finish line of course for 2018 will be here on New Year's Eve, and at the moment it looks very unpredictable, and sort of either fifth lowest or fourth lowest or third lowest or second lowest. Um, I think during November it will be more settled and we'll see more clearly where 2018 is going to end up. So, yeah, the Arctic is quite unpredictable almost through the entire year, but, you know, these annual average graphs are slightly more predictable than, than the daily graphs. But even here, uh, I'm quite <laughs> surprised by this turn, but, you know, it's the Arctic. And the same graph for volume. And you can see we are fourth lowest even here, even here, even just as uh, in the 
volume to date this year and yeah you see the uh, prognosis we are going to be either fifth lowest or fourth lowest at the end of the year and you see 2017 the lowest year on record is down here okay and this is a more long-term uh, plot uh, where we go back to 1979 and compare the um, current uh, two-year average for uh, sea ice volume compare that to the average volume in uh, 1979 and um, uh, with that you are um, you have a progress of 60% from the 1979 level and down to the half year blue ocean event level. So the half year um, ice free state is 60% along the way. Uh, if you look at the two year trend, um, and a two year trend is um, it's the average of two years of the two uh, latest years of uh, sea ice volume, and that is to up into onto November sixth, twenty eighteen. So it's like November seventh, twenty sixteen to November sixth, twenty eighteen for the two year, and similar for the other um, number of years averages year one year four year um, and you can see also that uh, the one year uh, average is only at 20 57 percent and that's because uh, the one year uh, is currently uh, higher than it was uh, in 2017 the record low year so it's it's uh, bumped a bit back here but um, you can see the other averages here and uh, the sort of median value here is 56 percent and uh, this is not changing very much from month to month because it's such a long such long averages like from one year and all up to 10 year average values and you can see the the 10 year is at 54% progress towards the half year ice free. Um, okay, it will likely go up to 55 in um, in the near future. So based on this uh, plot, you can make um, predictions for when we will have the uh, half year ice free. And that's the next slide. And for the 60%, um, you know, the two year average, um, the prediction is for uh, 2024 to, to have a half year ice free in the Arctic. Um, and I should say that this is uh, this uh, Good Hope model is a four dimensional model. Um, in the sense that you have three-dimensional sea ice, but you also have uh, a um, a set of uh, estimates from the model over time. So you have time and the three three spatial dimensions. So that means that the most common model run for the two-year trend is 2024. Although the very latest uh, output from the two year is higher than, uh, than 2024, but 24 is uh, sort of the uh, most frequent pick from the two year model. And uh, the, um, the four next, uh, the four lowest next model predictions. Uh, are 2033 and 34 and 2035 and they are from uh, 
the much lo longer average is 20, 10 year, 8, eight year, 9 year and 7 year. And um, yeah, if you want to play safe, you would go go with like 33 to 34. That's uh, when we would go ice free for six months, but um, that's not really playing safe, you know, if, if there is reason to believe that we can go ice free for half a year, one decade earlier with all of the huge consequences of that. So um, I think it's um, wise to, to, to keep an eye on these shorter range um, averages as well. And there is even one even shorter estimate for 2020, uh, which is the one year trend. But uh, this is I've uh, chosen to suspend that for, for the time being because, because the one year, um, as I mentioned, is currently higher than last year and not uh, not really pointing to, to zero ice at the moment. Uh, so even though 2020 is uh, the most frequent pick from that model, uh, I've just suspended it for, for this uh, plot here uh, until, until such time as uh, the one year trend is lower than um, than the previous year. Okay. And this is uh, maybe a more familiar plot. Uh, you see the same thing here with 2024 being the most um, frequent or, or biggest font uh, for these predictions for a half year ice free. And here you also say you see 2020, which is uh, still the the second um, second most frequent pick from these um, models and uh, you also see 2025 and 26 are uh, reasonable estimates for when we have half year ice free and um, of course this is this model is uh, not perfect and, uh, and there's no telling whether or not it will be correct in, in the final uh, judgment but um, what I can say about it is that uh, I'm using already uh, measured data for the sea ice uh, from the sea ice volume model of Pyomas and so instead of trying to simulate the entire Arctic or the entire weather systems and climate systems and feedback systems, I've just used the the data that are already in and made some rules for how the projections are going to be um, made from that data. Um, so um, yeah, I promised to also talk a bit about hope uh, or what I will choose to call good hope. Um, I noticed there's been some election thing going on in America over the last days and um, so to contrast the good hope I will talk about the uh, bad hope or futile hope that's the hope everybody is familiar with. I like, say, the Senate in America being dominated by one party or the uh, the House or the Congress being dominated by that party and sort of the hope that the entire free press is, is putting in uh, into those things is that if that party wins or that party wins this or the, that chamber of power, then we will somehow magically uh, stop climate change or uh, you know turn the entire apparatus of the industrial uh, war machine around, you know, just like that, just by turning off a switch and 
of course that's not going to happen anytime soon and uh, it will not happen in in these time frames of uh, you know two to two to five years uh, there's not going to be a total shift in uh, the capitalistic system in such a short time and you have experts saying that it's too late <clears throat> to to make a um, significant dent in the in the trend of uh, global warming it's already a runaway train it's um, self-reinforced you have feedbacks left and right that make sure that it's going to keep warming uh, whether we choose that political party or not or whether we start taking the subway or train instead of a car it's um, long-term cycles and feedbacks that are already um, chock full of uh, carbon um, carbon that's uh, hiding in the, in the ocean for a while and then being released to the atmosphere again or carbon that's been stored for hundreds of thousands of years in, in the tundra of Siberia in the permafrost all of these things they don't uh, respect political um, elections in Europe or America or Australia or anything it's uh, these are natural processes and they may be triggered by um, human industrial uh, civilization but these days they are already triggered and they don't need any more triggers from uh, from humans to keep going so um, and um, sort of the hope connected with this the good hope is that we are on a course for civilization collapse and that means that the war machine the deep state um, and what uh, George Orwell called um, the perpetual wars uh, that wars are uh, fought for profit and and to keep the population in check um, the security state and all of these things are sort of founded on the principle of being at war at any moment so because we are at war against uh, Oceania or whatever um, that means that everybody has to be um, monitored and controlled by the government and the deep state wants that sort of system to be in place all the time for its own reasons you know to, to better control um, their populations so they wage wars so that uh, their own companies can get the profits from the war industry and from the armament industry and from the aircraft industry and everything um, but all of that is going to collapse, of course, together with the uh, industrial civilization. And if you get the kind of feedbacks that are written about in the scientific press um, with the carbon in the, in the Arctic, uh, these uh, estimates for a half year of no sea ice in the Arctic are also pretty good estimates for when uh, agricultural crops and whatever feeds uh, human civilization are also going to collapse so the sea ice is not just some kind of nerdy uh, fascination for one little aspect of the planet but it's uh, closely connected to our own societies our civilizations all over the planet uh, and when uh, the ice collapses civilization will collapse uh, will follow very soon and 
that's the end of most of the things that good people have been uh, fighting against for so many decades and centuries. That's the end of the war machine. That's the end of all kinds of, you know, oppression and torture and yeah. So um, even though the the years after the uh, civilization collapse are not going to be a walk in the park, to put it mildly, um, at least we won't have uh, all of these senseless wars. We won't have drone strikes uh, killing everybody at weddings. We won't have torture and governments uh, prying into everything we do. Um, so I think, you know, given the choice we have of things to be hopeful about and things that are um, even remotely possible to, to come through. I think this hope is, you know, to be quite honest, it's the, it's the only hope we can offer. And um, do tell me what you think about this little rant and what you sort of hope you can see yourself. Um, and I'm hoping to be able to invite to a conversation so that we together can find out what things are uh, meaningless to, to hope about and what things are at least, you know, possible. They may come true and it won't be a perfect, easy or very pleasant world, but it will be a new world anyway. So, okay. Bye.